uh, presenter to this session is uh, Roni Levit. She has a studio for design. She's a graduate of Betanel, am I correct? And uh, uh, she will speak about special urban diagrams. Speaking English? English. Okay, thank you. No, 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 okay. Today, I'm going to say that. Okay, hi. Um, I promised I'll speak in English, so um, I'll try and do that. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I'm a designer, visual communication designer, and uh, I, my studio operating in Tel Aviv is focused solely on uh, data visualization projects, uh, both for corporates and a lot of reports, which I love. And, uh, and ex exhibitions, data visualization for exhibitions and some projects of my own that I work at, work on. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, my, uh, this, this uh, sub-discipline that I've started working at this past year and it's uh, taking diagrams, very, very simple um, diagrams and putting them out on the street in a physical way. Uh, to give them life uh, outside newspapers and, uh, and reports and, and computer programs. And actually, data visualization, the first data visualization that humankind uh, invented was most likely physical, using uh, stones or pebbles and later clay tokens. These are from uh, Mesopotamia. And they were used uh, for merchants and for bookkeeping. Um, as uh, uh, eminent archaeologist uh, Denise Schmenbesser uh, wrote, clay tokens suggest that physical objects were used to externalize information, support visual thinking, and enhance cognition way before paper and writing were invented. So, things we can touch and feel. Um, I recently had my first son sleeping in the back, and uh, he, and I, I remembered watching him, I remember that I read this theory that babies are born synesthetic, that they can experience one sense with a different sense. Uh, they can see um, sounds, they, they uh, hear colors. And after a while, this uh, brain uh, activity changes and, uh, and the connections are, are strengthened and it dis disappears. But I thought um, that we all know, and as Inbal said before, that uh, we read information better if we have the, physical, the visual shape of it, and we can see colors and shapes and, orient and, and um, orientation. But what if we can harness another sense for that and use our sense of touch and um, spatial uh, orientation to create more of a rememberability of that that we wanted to, uh, people to know. And actually the city um, is, is my playground in terms of, oh, um, that I see diagrams everywhere. Um, just looking here, you see this is a bar graph. And, uh, and there's tons of them here. And uh, so these images from my Instagram account, I document that um, my dinner plate becomes a pie chart. So this happens to me all the time. I work with graphs, I see them everywhere. And the, and the city actually gives me a lot of opportunities to see uh, graphs in buildings. And it's built out of units that uh, can be put together to create uh, relativity. Uh, to, to, to show data blocks. So this was, this was my um, initial, I don't know, psychosis uh, to, that brought me to, to start experimenting in this project. And the first, uh, the first part of it was at the Ramat Gan, the Bursa area. It's the Bursa, the um, uh, diamond exchange. And this area was um, 
formerly uh, occupied with diamond cutting uh, workshops, it was very dirty, car shops and prostitution at night. And last, I think, 10 years, efforts are made to, to make this area um, Tel Aviv's business uh, quarter. And so high-rise buildings are built and uh, trendy cafes popped out. And uh, it's, it's undergoing this transition. And uh, uh, the municipality came to me asking to create public interventions in the, in the space to, to, to make uh, these intimate uh, spots that you can stop and, I don't know, have a moment. So um, what, what I did, my team, we went out and, and, and put out a survey of the people of, of the Bursa working there and we found out that this transformation is far from complete, that the area is still very dodgy, uh, especially at night, very... Uh, uh, very dark. Uh, at the daytime, it's extremely hot. There's no shade. There's no sitting places. So, kind of not the the very uh, trendy, nice industrial, um, former industrial, now uh, um, easy to live and easy to work at area. So uh, we've uh, the. We took all this data and we, collect, and we collected some more data that we thought people would want to see and people would want to experience. And while doing that, we, we were looking for uh, containers to, to show it. So fences and, uh, and pipes and, and the containers needed to fit the, the data. So, so it creates um, this uh, whole experience. So this gave birth to, to six diagrams, seven. Um, this, uh, the, there was the sitting area that was packed at lunchtime, and it was, it was really the only sitting area. But as you can see with the survey, 80% think that say that there's no sun, so literally you can't sit in the bench without being in the yellow part, which is the sun. So physically, you you are squished. And uh, another another uh, question was about uh, places to sit. And again, 68% of the people say that there aren't any places to sit. So this is the red zone, the forbidden zone. And you really, it's pretty hard not to sit on the forbidden zone or like that. So this was some of the statistics in this little uh, um, resting area. And um, some of the diagrams are, are basically drawn on the floor or drawn on the wall, but the, just by situating them in, in a specific uh, spot, we, we created something different. So we have this, there is this uh, a triangle of chairs uh, nailed to the floor and people sit there for, for like a quick coffee and we wanted to talk about a meeting, a conversation and this area is very, very diverse so, because there is uh, also uh, like boutique hotels and, uh, and working girls that come from different places in the world so we wanted to show about languages and what languages are spoken in Israel in this little uh, conversation spot and uh, again with the smoking area, that the smoking area is, uh, has these uh, tiles and we use those tiles as, as pixels to show data blocks of how much would you uh, save if you would stop smoking for a week, for a day, uh, for a day, for a week, for a year, half a year, the, the orange is half a year. Um, some of the visualizations that's kind of funny because it was induced, well it was uh, ordered and paid for by the municipality, but some of the information kind of, it kind of showing them shedding not, not such a, a nice light on the, on the municipality. And this uh, information is, uh, is about trees and the ratio of trees per people. And there is this very nice square that they really, really g did a lot of effort into making it like this nice roundabout with a boutique hotel and there's a tree and it's this palm tree that's very, very tall and has this very little, you know, leaves on top and it really produces no shade in this hot country of ours where it's sunny most of the time. And uh, we've created this artificial shade of, of other countries and their, and their trees as opposed to ours. Uh, another issue was, of course, uh, light. We were looking to, to show information coming out of a, of, of a beacon of light, so we were looking for um, lamps. And as it turned out, we found, uh, we found this really 
uh, cool lamp that uh, that was uh, just on top of a, of a be of a bench. So we said, okay, so let's color the bench as well. And it's about electricity usage, and uh, you are immersed in the information once you sit uh, on the bench and uh, or immersed in dark. So. I, I love these diagrams. It's it's just fun, you know. I, I work with it, with with data visualization all the time. This is my life, so it's just making fun, making making it fun, and uh, and it has a life of its own. The second time was March this year was um, at the Dizengoff Center. It's a shopping mall in the center of Tel Aviv, and um, and not a lot of people know, but Dizengoff Center is. Um, is actually the first shopping mall that is undergoing a green retrofit, striving to become the first shopping mall in the world that is totally self-sufficient, has no carbon footprint. And they have a lot of uh, things done in, in, in terms of sustainability. Also, uh, also in employment, they employ their workers directly, not uh, through contract workers, so it's pretty rare in Israel. And uh, they have uh, they have trees and the, and the roof and hydroponics and and, and, and a bat sanctuary and uh, and bird sanctuary. It's a uh, it's a very very uh, interesting uh, management decision. So we've decided to to have some of the diagrams uh, showing and also educating uh, this information. And uh, we we also looked for locations that would uh, that would show that and. Of course, they lowered their uh, they lowered their electricity usage by forty percent using gas now. So we were uh, we were looking for a closet that uh, electricity closet to to show this information, at. and this was slightly uh, harder. But uh, but we we still wanted to to create those diagrams using the the elements in the in space and the. And one of the diagrams we decided to just take as is and put on the stairs. And these are, this is the diagram about uh, CO2, uh, CO2. <laughs> emission uh, with different, uh, different uh, industries of food. And the red one, you probably know, is the meat industry. So you literally uh, walk on the red line the longest uh, in order to, to uh, this might be get, being stuck. No. Okay, so you, you walk on the red line the longest because it is the most polluting industry as opposed to uh, dairy and vegetables. And uh, this is funny because one of my, my fellow designers says, oh, you, you did that? My daughter loves to walk on the red. <laughs> so, uh, so this also, uh, I, I love it that it has life and, it's and then it gets slightly broken and, 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 and it uses the space and, and people react on it and sometimes they write uh, something. I, I, by the way, every diagram had a QR code about, we were talking about uh, sources, it had a QR code to the open source of uh, the information. And we've also uh, made some of them that came from the, the people and one of them was, uh, uh, the thing is that this mall is just a part of the city. It's, it's kind of like a street, one of the streets in Tel Aviv. And uh, we've asked people how they arrived, uh, hoping to get the answer that most of them uh, arrived by, by foot. Um, I'm not sure that was, uh, that was the answer because a lot of them did not arrive by foot, but uh, uh, this was a question and we've asked people to, to glue, to, to stick a sticker with the color according to what methods of transportation they used. And, um, and, and then, we were talking about that a little bit with them, and that kind of uh, that was the inspiration for for another diagram that uh, uh, was uh, pointing was talking about the garden that they have on the roof, and this balcony has like a little bit of the hydrophonic garden that they have on the roof. So we've said, okay, if we have ten trees, there's a nursery of trees. They only raise them, and once they become kind of like teenager trees, they bring, they they donate them somewhere, they only grow them that they would clean the air. So if you would, uh, uh, one tree needs 10 years to clean up what you uh, ride, in a, like the, the carbon that a car would deflot, um, put out, I don't know. 
in, in two kilometers as opposed to a train, as opposed to a bus. So we, we, we try to link this transportation to, and this is all on this balcony. And um, the last diagram, this is really something very cute. Um, they have beehives on the roof as well, with the bats and the birds and, and beehives that actually pollinate uh, flowers uh, on gardens and, and, and balconies, private, private balconies. And uh, the elevator leading to the roof is hexagon. So it was really a no-brainer and we decided to, to situate this diagram and uh, honeybees as you know, are well. I, I don't know if you know, but honeybees are um, responsible for a third of what we eat. So we wanted to show that, and uh, these are the different uh, different um, foods that uh, that honeybees are uh, responsible for. And there's a hundred percent of almonds. So if you like marzipan, this is uh, save the bees. So so the and the elevator goes goes up to the fourth floor, and and you can see the. Uh, uh, the, um, the beehives. So this was really, really fun and I got to work with amazing people and amazing research and, and because it was so much fun we're, <laughs> in my studio, we're, uh, we're continuing uh, in this, um, well, I don't know how to call it, this type of, of work. Uh, next work we're going to start um, uh, in two months once it becomes a bit cooler. It's in Rishon Lezion. There is this fence, you know, with the uh, cement fence with the indentations of the of the boards that created it. So we're going to use those as a timeline, and we're going to show um, the newspaper usage in Israel since 1950. What newspapers were read, what like, newspaper died, the newspapers emerged, and then it was the internet. So this is going to be uh, in the fen uh, outside the fence of the uh, Yediot's uh, print house, and, um, which is called the Media Mitram. Um, and, uh, and the other one is uh, uh, on this uh, uh, winter, I'm going to Prague to <laughs> to have this uh, course, this uh, crash course, doing this, uh, this type of diagrams in Prague. So I don't know what are we going to use, what will be the data. This is all site specific. So uh, the students are going to collect the data, see either via uh, questions in the street or by just researching and, and looking for open source. And we're going to research the data and then we're going to find the special elements that will host it. And uh, I don't know what we're going to this, this remains to be seen. Thank you. What's, what's, what's the craziest project you want to do? I'm sorry, it's, it's super exciting. The lecture was great. Uh, all, all the work is beautiful. What, what is the most interesting project you hope to do? It's a super fan question. <laughs> what, what would you want to do? How far do you think this can go? Can we use entire buildings? Like, oh yes, I want you to. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some people, have, some, some some municipalities have said, "Oh yeah, we want that," but like there isn't the, the, the colors are not strong enough, and like <laughs> and so it, it costs too much. But it it will it will happen one day. <laughs> Thank you. One more question before you run off. I'm so used to doing things for the screen. And uh, my question was, when you're faced with this larger canvas, like this wall in Rishon, which is maybe meters long, um, how do you think about placement of legends, right? Because it's not like I could just mouse over the thing and find out what it is. Uh, it needs to be close enough that I can figure out uh, you know, that this is related to that thing and it needs to be close enough that I'm not going to be lazy and actually walk over to read it. Um, like it's kind of funny you asking this question because, no, I tell you why, because you are talking about a new thing, the mouse over. I come from a discipline where there's no mouse over, so you, you have to create a poster and when you create a poster you have all those different levels of, of uh, visibility and different levels of, of engagement. So you kind of have to 
every time you do this or a wall or a poster or any graphic uh, element you have to create visibility for people walking standing 10 meters away and a, vi a different visibility for people uh, standing two meters away and then you can have also the very little fine print so each one of these stages needs to give some kind of information but 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 and attract a little bit more and as a viewer you can decide how how much do you want to dive inside and the hovering is is a privilege of of, of the interactive world so i'm really used to not having it Yeah, thanks very much for the presentation. Amazing. Uh, my, my question relates to the, f uh, to the pre previous question a bit uh, regarding use of interaction. So most of the visualization is, is static, well designed for a fitting purpose. Have you thought about including interaction where the user, for example, could select data of interest or change a variable? Um, yeah, customize it. Um, yes, and I'm still kind of trying to figure out how uh, this... Uh, in October, we're going to have a crash course also in uh, in Hulon, uh, in in Shapira neighborhood. It's a, it's a neighborhood in Tel Aviv, and what what we're planning is to, is to do just that. But I just don't know how yet. So I'm going to have to think about it because it's it's I'm used to being uh, that I have the data and then I can see how how I design it so it will be best uh, put, put forward. But if the data is unknown, uh, it's, it's hard, but I, I, I will figure it out, I hope. <laughs> or they will, the students. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.